Is the Illuminati in cahoots with your government, performing false flag operations, killing civilians, spreading misinformation, and utilizing crisis actors to keep you in the dark? I'm your host Oscar, and it's once again time to delve into the fringe. Crisis actor is a buzzword in conspiracy circles, so what are they and what are they used for? They are actors deployed at media covered scenes of violence, used by the Illuminati to gain control over the narrative. Narrative. Ugh. Tumblr has given that word a bitter taste. They can be seen in the background, in a state of distress or sorrow, or they can be the subject of interviews to actively spread misinformation to keep you from the truth. Conspiracy theorists claim that they have been used in several high-profile cases, such as the shootings in Sandy Hook and Aurora, as well as the Boston bombing. Further, they claim that these events are so-called false flag operations, executed by the Illuminati and your government to achieve their sinister goals. So, why? The Illuminati works in mysterious ways. Maybe they set up these false flag attacks to persuade the people into accepting strict laws on gun control. Maybe they do it to persuade the people into arming themselves to their teeth to protect their loved ones and object gun control laws. Or maybe they do it to go... But steel beams do not melt at those temperatures. But that doesn't matter, since there is no way that anyone can eat that much fruit and have it go unnoticed. Checkmate. Possible motivation is just speculative. It's not very interesting to discuss, since pretty much all of it can be rebutted with the question, why though? But it is very entertaining, so I do recommend that you read some conspiracy theories. But we want something more tangible, something to observe and to measure. So let's review their evidence. One of the runners at the Boston event is apparently the same person as a teacher at Sandy Hook, because they happen to look alike and are therefore crisis actors. I have blurred out the names of these people, because apparently the conspiracy theorists tend to harass the people they believe to be crisis actors. At first glance, they do not appear to be the same person. Their nostrils are clearly different, their jaw lines do not match up, and their ears are not that similar. And there is more pictures of both of them. They are not the same person. Here we have a man who got his legs blown off in the Boston bombing. The problem with this image is the following. No trail of blood. First off, these people are running. There would have to be some seriously intense bleeding for it to leave a clear trail. Secondly, there probably is a trail, but you can only see maybe half a meter before the area where the trail would have been is obscured by other elements in the photo. Lastly, there's obviously no chance of saving his legs, so they applied a tourniquet to stop the bleeding, clearly visible in the photo. Legs blown off, yet he does not appear to be in pain or shock. You obviously have no idea what shock is. Shock is a state your body can enter when your organs are not receiving enough oxygen. It's a life-threatening state since it can lead to other complications such as heart failure. Common symptoms include pale skin, dizziness, low blood pressure and a rapid pulse, just to name a few. You do not diagnose shock from pictures, and you certainly do not do it from just the one picture. But I believe that you are referring to mental distress in the form of an acute stress reaction. You still do not diagnose that from just the one picture, but common symptoms for that include emotional detachment and depersonalization, and it's very likely to occur in situations such as this one, so you're just wrong all over the place. I do recommend further reading about shock and acute stress reactions, mainly how to identify it as well as the do's and don'ts. It could save lives. And finally, they claim that this person is really an army veteran who had his legs amputated. 
because they happen to look kind of similar. Oh, for fuck's sake. Looking similar does not mean that you're the same person. Not even identical twins are the same person. Another fan favorite of these two, of course believed to be the same person. And yeah, they look extremely similar, they even have the same kind of flat smile. But their faces distort in different ways when doing the same smile. This girl gets lines here and here, while the other girl does not. The distance from their nostrils to their upper lips is also different, as well as the length of their necks. Another piece of evidence is apparently that they both say um a lot. The conspiracy theorists even made a whole video about it. So, um, 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 and if, um, um, I, um, um, and, um, and so, um, 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 I know, um, you know, um, 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 Now that I think of it, Alison Brie from Community also has the same kind of smile. By the toe of Satan, this extends all the way to Hollywood. Poe's law is very much in effect here. And that's really all there is. They have a few more people, they claim to be the same person, but the um girls are by far the most similar. And you can look the rest up yourself if you're interested, the link is in the description. But they also have this video from a press talk after the Sandy Hook shooting. They're claiming that this father is an actor because he smiles before he starts talking. So they're getting ready to make, uh, to come to the microphone, so we'll listen in. My name's Robbie Parker. My family is one of the families that lost a child yesterday in the Sandy Hook Elementary School shootings here in Connecticut. I don't know what experience you have with people, but if you're expecting someone who just had their child shot to death to behave the way that you see fit, well you're an asshole. How do you know that someone in the audience didn't do something to show support? And he smiled to let them know that he saw it and appreciated it. Or that the cameras briefly confused him and he reacted with a smile before the reality of the situation once again entered his mind. Bottom line, you're a fucking asshole and you should be ashamed. Besides, if he really was an actor, don't you think he would have gotten into character before he faced the cameras? Doubting his acting skills like this is just rude. He's got a lead role, a speaking role. Don't you think they would have hired a professional instead of this doofus? Sloppy casting, Illuminati. Sloppy casting. And that brings us to the stupidity of crisis actors as a concept. You're claiming that the Illuminati is hiring them to control the narrative and to keep you from the truth. The way that you describe this organization, do you really think that they will let these highly organized and meticulously planned events be exposed by tinfoil hats on the internet armed only with their ability to recognize a face? Don't you think they would have thought of that? Or is that just another layer in this grand onion of misinformation? And if that's the case, I would really want some of that Illuminati money for making this episode. Honestly, how many people would it take for such an organization to do what you're claiming that they do? You got 9-11, the war on terror, Jade Helm, and all these shootings across the USA and probably the entire world. They would need government officials, the military, 
FBI agents, researchers, engineers, transportations, demolition crews, the media, and even poured up party suppliers. The overwhelming level of confidence you have in these people doing their jobs perfectly every single time is just astounding. Have you ever before witnessed such competence? And yet, they're not competent enough to make sure not to use the same actors more than once. A simple checklist is just too much for these people. They can recruit all the agents and bribe all the researchers they want, but actors, well, they're just so damn hard to find. Really, you have nothing. What you're saying is moronic, plain and simple. Yeah, you should be skeptical of your government because corruption is a real problem. But this is paranoia, not skepticism. Why would anyone do this? There have been plenty of dictators throughout history who had control of the population without resorting to these ridiculous mind games. Religion, brute force or both is really all you'd need. You're just making fools of yourselves. And to harass witnesses and the relatives of the victims in these events is in extremely poor taste. If you're gonna out someone and potentially ruin their lives, you better make damn sure that they're actually guilty first. And on top of that, you're soiling the good names of the men and women who are actually crisis actors and advisors used in movies and extremely important drills that are used to make sure that disaster protocols actually work. Yes, it's a real thing and it's honest and important work. But I have to admit that it's quite ballsy of you to claim that events with these many witnesses and victims are hoaxed. I mean, the moon landing was one thing that mostly involves NASA, but this? Okay, maybe ballsy is not the right word, it's more stupid than anything. If you do not like the spreading of misinformation, then stop spreading it. So yeah, fuck you. Oh, damn it, this is not paranormal. My description says I examine paranormal things and now I have to change that. Oh, it's just too much. I don't I don't have time for this. Oh, I better go play some games and calm down. Oh, there's a damsel in distress. And I need to do my part in upholding the patriarchy. Women can't do anything. Shouldn't even be allowed in the kitchen. They can't cook. And they drop the dishes. If you want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. If you have a penis.